All right, everybody, we are back in the house. You got Rude Mike. Rude Ma has finally made it here, and I have this phenomenal cast here. When you guys find out everybody that I have here, you're gonna like flip out because I know I'm flipping out. Like I have, I'm flipping out. Like this is. <laughs> in case you didn't get that, that is my most favorite, favorite person in the world. Las Vegas Live with the Neon at the Pepper Mill every Tuesday. You know you need to go catch that show. If you do not, definitely log on to YouTube and follow, 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 subscribe. Uh, we have Keith Kramer, which. I am saying that right because you know I mess yes. your name up every single time you come. <laughs> okay. I, I, I got it right this time, correct? Okay. Well, you guys, I have something else in store for you that I have been waiting and it finally came popped off. So, I have Mr. Valentino, the, tr the world famous tribute artist that the world tribute, sorry, world famous Michael Drax Jackson tribute artist on the strip has a show hit show on the strip here in las vegas and we have miss geraldine hughes that is the author of the redemption book of michael jackson so welcome everybody to reckless welcome 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 to hot it's amazing to be here with you Mike. oh thank you thank you i am so honored to have all of you guys here wow it has been a journey it has been a journey to get but it's, yes but it's worth it. yes it is worth it it is worth it, it is yeah. worth it. it is. so let's hop right into this Miss Hughes, my first question is, what led up to you writing this book? I wrote the, decided to write the book, Redemption, The Truth Behind the Michael Jackson Child Molestation Allegation, because I worked for the attorney in 1993 that framed Michael Jackson of the child molestation allegation. The true story was it was an extortion scheme, and when Michael wouldn't give them the money. He wanted the money to make a movie. Mm -hmm. When Michael refused to give him $20 million so he could make a movie, my attorney devised the scheme, the, extor uh, the child molestation allegation, to force him to give them the money. Wow. 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 And you were... <laughs> You were in house as, at that, so you got you found out all this information firsthand. It wasn't right. secondhand. You have seen this all take place. Yes, I was inside the accusers' camp. Oh, I was an eyewitness to him being extort being extorted because the father wanted to twenty million dollars to make a movie, and while he was saying, "Give me the money because." You ruined my relationship with my son, and my son, me and my son need an opportunity to bond. Mm -hmm. My attorney was querying the doctor that they later went to to frame Michael Jackson with because they needed somebody credible to make the allegation. Oh my God, wow. Can I ask a question? How this long, why did it take so long to get to today? Because this is the first time I think we've all heard about this, isn't it? Um, in 1993, I came forward. I went to Anthony Pelicano while I was still working with the attorney, and I reported what I had seen and what I had heard. Um, when Michael decided to settle the case in 93, they made him drop the extortion scheme. So all the information that I personally came forward and provided, and that he had, uh, that they were really planning to go to court and win. He had to drop the, they, they made him drop the extortion scheme. So that's why, I mean, the extortion allegation. So that's why you haven't heard the story the about story. the extortion. So there was a certain amount of time that you couldn't say or do anything then. No, I no, I didn't uh, get the idea to write the book until three years later. Mm -hmm. After the 94 settlement, I came up with the idea. I thought it would be the best way to put my information without any media attention because we went through a lot of media attention oh, yeah. when it hit. And so I said, okay, I'll write the book, I'll put it out. They believe me, if they if they want to believe me, they can believe it if they don't, oh well. Mm -hmm. and I never knew that when I put this book out that the first phone call I would get was Joe Jackson. And uh, he was the biggest <coughs> supporter of my book. Uh, he said, uh, when I called, he said, hold on just a moment, I, I want to put you on speakerphone so my wife Catherine can hear you. And I knew then, only then I knew I was in for a journey that I really wasn't ready for. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then uh, Jermaine Jackson was my next call. We actually did uh, an interview together uh, at NBC. He wanted me to come and do an interview yeah. with them. 
And uh, so I wanted Jermaine to, I said, I gave him a copy of the book. I said, I want you to read the book so while you're out there interviewing, you'll know the facts. And Show Jermaine, the Jermaine took the stuff. book and gave it back to me, said, uh, can I have your autograph? I said, no, I'm not ready for this journey. <laughs> Hold on a second. Something is wrong with this journey right here. So I've come forward uh, many a times, um, and I've ever since Michael passed, I realized then that this was not just a book that for people to read. This is a movie that needs to be seen because the extortion scheme was so elaborate. Mm -hmm. I'm in the office and didn't really quite know. I knew something was wrong. Nice. I knew there was something wrong. And you, even though I was there and an eyewitness, it wasn't until they came against Michael and I'm sitting there watching the breaking news on TV and I said, it all came together for me. Then you realized that you could. I realized that all these little pieces that I was with and I wouldn't, those things that didn't make sense while you're hiding, you're, why are you hiding from the employee? I'm supposed to know everything that you're doing. And then when it did hit, they came, they came unglued. They started, Chandler had no place to meet, so he came for three days. Him and Jordy Chandler came and stayed inside of my attorney's office. And I heard uh, Evan blurt out, he says, my ass is in danger of going to j prison right here. And I wow. said, really? Well. Wow. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. <laughs> really? Wow. The judge this, this, never know. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah. 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 Really? But there's more, you know, so I just encourage people, we're in the process of, we're venturing down the uh, the first element of making a movie is the budget. Mm -hmm. So we've got a few s people at the table proposing, but Joe Jackson taught me something very interesting. He said, until the money is on the table, you don't have a deal. So if there's anybody want to rush to judgment, want to beat somebody to, <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing it out there, but the movie is getting ready to get made and the world is gonna know not only that Michael Jackson was not a child molester, they need to, we need to crush oh, the 93 allegation that's because that's where it started. Yeah. And that's what this story does. It tells, while they were trying to say he did it again in 2003, my book was coming out to say he didn't do didn't it the do first that. time. Yeah, yeah, he's not a child molester well, at it's all. Wonderful that we have somebody that can actually bring this up of, of the truth right. coming from the right place because people are going to question that, as we all know. Yes. But it's coming from the right place, and it's coming from where you were actually at. Right. And I can understand now why it took so long. Do you have the financing on it yet? We, are have, we, are we you? have a couple of investors at the table right okay. now. Okay. Uh, the well, everybody out there, hey, the come the on, jump is on not this. On. <laughs> this investors is an incredible are at the story. Table, but the money is not on the table. Well, that, right we, no, it, it, we, we, we need the money. <laughs> <laughs> Notice how I keep saying that. It's not there yet. It's not. Well, there. no, we're going to listen to to Joe Jackson. What did he say? Nothing happens till the money he is there. Until so the Joe was my <laughs> biggest supporter, and he said, "Until the money is on the table, you don't have, have a deal." deal. Yeah, a wise man. I've heard that before. Yeah, definitely. Well, I have a question. At this time, when this first was going on, Valentino, you were working with Michael at that time, correct? Correct. And how long did you work with Michael? For about seventeen years. Wow, that so must actually, have been amazing. I actually did. I worked on in two capacities under MJJ Productions, mm -hmm. and then also directly for Sony. Um, they would send me to do um, promotion, uh, promotional appearances on behalf of the album uh, releases, and then also I did stand-in decoy work on the tours. <laughs> wow. So, and can I ask, how did you get into that? How, what, how did you happen to stumble up to become Valentino? How did you stumble up to be, how did that happen? Well, first I was born. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> we get that, we get that. How did, okay, explain to us, how did you and Michael end up together? How did that happen? Well, our families actually knew each other completely outside of uh, show business. And when I was a, a youngster, I was a street dancer and you know, Michael had a strong affinity f for street dancing. So a lot of the guys that worked with him choreography wise, they were like, um, kind of like big brothers in the, in the street dance scene. Mm -hmm. And there was a photographer from Jet Magazine that introduced us initially over the phone, literally over a pay phone. Because <laughs> that's how, how far they were then. Was. <laughs> in those that's days. Wow, that, that's back <laughs> and, there. Um, I just kind of won introduction led to another um, 
and it just kind of evolved. There was really no um, preconceived mapping or, or blueprint. It just evolved, and the more I did, the more I was uh, called to do. And all of the time that, I mean, I spent a lot of time with Michael. Now, and these accusers that are out now, mm -hmm. like I know those guys, and I have been in the hotel room watching movies with one of the accusers. His mother was there, Michael was there, Bill Bray, rest in peace, security was there. Mm -hmm. And if what he was saying were even possible, then I must have been a part of it, and I wasn't. Right. And I was definitely there. Wow. So, and I mean, there's numerous, numerous um, occasions where I was around both of those guys in the presence of Michael, not in the presence of Michael, and um, it's just very interesting how they fabricate a story have uh, this epiphany 10 years after he's gone <laughs> Ruth Mike you are getting all the honest truth yes yes that's what this, cool? this, was, this, this is, is so amazing. cool this, this is this what we is wanted really this is what we needed this is what needed to happen to clear his name yes. so this is amazing this is a perfect step to clearing up his name because mm -hmm. I was a fan of him and Wow, this I is I think the amazing. world was. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't. I mean, he wasn't. Was. Still is. And still is. And still is, yeah. Mm -hmm. I but like the idea of him cleaning up his name, and that's wonderful. Yes. So but that's what I would have liked it and loved it even more if. for him to be here to see. Oh, he's here. He's up there floating around. To, I he's know, there. but to, for him to be here to <laughs> In person. see yeah. them clear his name right. yeah. and right. for them to have to take that jacket off of him. Yes. Right. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. Because that took part of his life. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's nice. the reason that he's not here today, because of the allegations and the things that they did to him. Right. So I wish he could have been here to see that. To see, and to I'm see his name clear. Oh, but it, but that's I mean it, it, it's I, all I just good. I wanted to interject did. one thing. Who was just talking? That was your mother. That was yes, just that's talking. Yes, that's Ruth Ma. That's So, so she, yeah. she's so back. She knows Ma. about all of the whole situation. You know, <laughs> I was a kid back in '93. I think I was like eight years old. You know, so uh, yeah. Put we that were all eight years old one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was I'm the closest that to eight and everyone in here, but you know, we're not gonna go there because you guys are all amazing, and I'm young. So listen, <laughs> and I thank you guys all for taking the time to come out and sit down with me and help me get this story put out here. So uh, back to Miss Hughes, can you run down? Let us know your background outside of you writing this book. Let us know your background. At the time, I was a legal secretary and um, I was an aspiring missionary, and um, I'm also a gospel singer-songwriter. It's really interesting because um, the, uh, when I wrote the book, I'm writing about a singer-songwriter, and uh, I was able to tell people in the book, I said, if you ever wanna know a person, listen to their music, mm -hmm. and when you listen to Michael Jackson's music, he's telling you who he is. He was somebody that was trying to heal the world. He was somebody that was trying to make this place a better place. And my missionary work, I used to work with children. Mm -hmm. They're my love. I've been raising kids my whole life. Mm -hmm. I'm also able to explain his love for children. You know, kids, you just want to make them happy. You don't care what the, we want to come and we want to do sleepovers and we want to get in your bed and well, can I have a corner of my own bed? Right. You know, Let that's me get just, those that's kids. Let me that's get those kids. That's children. It's the innocence of children. Of children, children. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So it was really interesting how, you know, I really do believe that as a missionary, that this was a mission that God put me on. Because, you know, a person who's trying to do good in life and then evil comes, you know, the one thing that God does is God promises that we're never going to be left alone. God gave Michael Jackson a witness. And I believe I was the witness. The other witness. That he gave yeah, him. yeah. yeah. Because right. of all the There's always someone, the isn't there? You know. Mm -hmm. There's I'm always someone right. there that's a, that's kind of yes. watching over. You know, you're never quite. I don't know whatever the story may be, good, yeah. bad, right, or wrong. Yes. But there's always yeah. someone that sees it. Yeah. And, and, and was able to. Fortunately, put it out there. you were able to get this young lady up and tell the story. So uh, I, think. I thank God. Like she hit me when I got the the we we linked together for this. Yeah. I was excited when I first heard about it. I checked with our little producer and everything. They cleared it. 
from the beginning. They, they did course. their homework real fast. Of course. And it's just been a mission to get everyone line, lined up to get here today. And I'm glad you all were able to come in and take the time to sit down and help me get this story put out like this. Can I ask a question with yes. Valentino? Yes. <laughs> Valentino, I watch you dance and you are the spit image, the way you move, the way you do. How did you learn that? I mean, he dances just... He shadowed him for 17 years. I mean, he learned from the best. <laughs> <laughs> he learned from the best. 17 years. I, the, but you picked it up. You, you, you. I think um, there, was, there, was some, um, there was some spiritual synergies that he and I shared that had nothing to do with entertainment. So it wasn't so much of a chore to um, learn. to learn because if it's part of you, if it's in you, you just perfect what's already there. Probably just like very natural to you. Right, correct. Yeah. And because I'm being uh, being a street dancer, it was a situation where a lot of what he performed was an adaptation of street dance. Yeah. So it really wasn't that far of a stretch. Because he had his own his own way. I mean, there's a lot of street dancers, a lot of dancers, but. Michael had his own way. Well, he, he mastered the masters. Yeah, that's he took that, that's, the, that's from the, the masters, answer, yeah. and then he mastered it. Yeah. And then put his own signature. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, I always wanted because I've watched him dance, and it, it's just like it's the the movement is amazing. So thank you, I, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> I, I can't wait. You know, I watched Michael, and I just wanted to know, like, the very first time you met Michael. I'd like to both of your experience. The first time you met Michael, or how, what was your experience? Um, I never met Michael. Well, you, <laughs> I'm sorry. When I say met Michael, I would say like when you met counter. when you met the uh, Joe Jackson. Yeah. Well, the my first encounter was when they uh, came out with the second allegation. We was right at the edge of putting the book out, so my press release was already out there. And the media picked up on it right away, so they started calling my publisher. But I didn't have clearance to use the picture, this picture, this beautiful picture of Michael Jackson. I had been trying for two years to get the clearance because when I went to Anthony Pelicana and gave him the information from the inside, I told him my daughter loved Michael. He had a beautiful picture of Michael hanging on his wall, mm -hmm. autographed, and he took it off the wall and he handed it to me. This is the picture that he gave me. Oh, when wow. I came forward wow. and so when I decided to write the book I wanted this picture and for two years I was trying I one of the uh, ladies from ABC came to interview with me and she told me she said I know the family and I said if you know the family will you please tell them I'm still waiting on clearance to use the picture and that was three days after that that Joe Jackson called and said you tell Mrs. Hughes she's got permission and then when I met Joe Jackson yeah. I said how did I get permission he said I just called Michael I said Michael the, the lady is trying to put the book out she needs clearance on the picture and he said Michael said well of course she's got my clearance <laughs> I love so I never got a chance to meet him I did they tried to get me to meet him uh, several times several occasions and uh, but at the time when I released the book he was under investigation the second time mm -hmm. so he said he couldn't really do anything mix it yeah, yeah he yeah. said I need but he gave me advice through his publicist she told me that he told her you know to go you know get support from public uh, figures and from um, political people to help me promote the book oh wow that's amazing so you put a lot of work into this a lot of time a lot of effort and a lot of persistence um it was not it was kind of easy because as soon as the fans found out yeah. that I had this book out. They, they all wanted it. <laughs> they and they it. wanted me to go everywhere with yeah. it. And they sent me everywhere, wherever they thought of, like, we want you to go here. And then when um, Michael passed and Catherine uh, did the first year that she did the memorial in Gary, uh -huh. I hadn't gone to Gary, Indiana, so I got a call from her camp saying she wanted me to come down there because she wanted me to bring the book so the people in Gary could know that he was innocent and how that all happened. Mm -hmm. And I wound up working with her for seven years. Wow. I wound up working Funny with her for seven years. Funny how things lead into everything else. Yeah, yeah, it all 
Valentina, Gary, and yeah. Diana, and Valentino came down. And then Valentino got us. involved yes, in it yes. and everything else, and that's how it all. And, <laughs> and that was amazing because we would li we were literally staying inside the home where Michael Jackson lived, where the family lived, and that house was probably about the size of this room right here. <laughs> and there were yeah. ten kids, and I said, I asked Catherine, I said, how did you guys manage in this little house like this? Catherine said the boys slept in one bedroom, the girls slept in another one, and her and Joe slept in the living room. Wow, oh, wow. that's a story on yes. its own. Oh, wow, really started. that's amazing. But yeah. people have to understand that he was used to being in a small quarters. He was used to family being all around him Hello. and children being all over the place, you know, because it wasn't just Catherine's children. There was a, a cousin. There's Keith Jackson who lives down there in Gary. And Keith's uh, mother told me that she, they were there all the time with Catherine, too, and she had five kids. Oh, wow. That was so it was a lot of kids. It was a lot of big to family. Be surrounded by yeah. children. Yeah. And for him, it was very natural. It, that's which people, home, that which was people didn't understand, him. obviously. You know, yeah, but that was that was why he loved being around kids. That's how he grew up. Wow. Okay, Valentino, can you tell me your first experience when you first met Michael? <clears throat> sure. So, when I was first introduced over the payphone, I was invited to. Uh, well, actually, the first time was during the uh, the Triumph tour, which is with his brothers. Mm -hmm. And it was the uh, it was the first tour without Jermaine, because that's when they did the split, and Jermaine yeah. stayed with Motown okay. and the brothers. And then um, I didn't do any work. I just had the occasion to meet him. It was backstage at the Forum, mm -hmm. and um, I remember but this was actually kind of funny because I remember walking in. I went through the wrong door, <laughs> and I was like. Where is he? Like I'm supposed to be meeting him. Where is he? And I was in the like, I was in like a storage closet. <laughs> <laughs> so the joke was, if you come out of the closet, you're not <laughs> <laughs> so you came out of the closet. Yeah. <laughs> so you had to come out of that closet. <laughs> but um, through the the years, um, Geraldine has the picture that he asked um, to be taken of he and I together working. There was several uh, very personal conversations that we have, and I never go to the press or any of that. Not just not because he was Michael Jackson, but just like because you wouldn't betray a friend right. or someone yeah. who has um, um, spoken to you in confidence. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any doesn't, doesn't make any sense, sense if if you're a, a genuine person. And I always mm -hmm. endeavor to be a genuine person. Mm -hmm. I would say that. He, what he inspired in me, outside of artistically, was just um, spiritual integrity and uh, compassion. Because I never saw anyone that uh, humble and that uh, serving to others. Um, you know, when he, when Michael performed from like 1984, I don't have the exact date, but <laughs> from around 1984 till his death, about almost 100% of the money that he made as a performer, he donated. That's why at the time of his death, it was like 350 or 500 million dollars that he had contributed mm -hmm. to charities in mm -hmm. his lifetime. Wow. Making wow. him the single greatest giver. He was more honored by that than all the accolades. When Geraldine and I connected um, in 2015, which was quite a year for me because I lost both my parents mm -hmm. eight months apart. Oh, sorry to hear that. I connected with Geraldine in between losing him. So I lost my mother in March, my father in December, but we connected in June, well, like May. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. June 25th, which is the anniversary of Michael's passing, we spent several hours closed door with Miss Jackson. I'm never going to discuss what the conversation was, out of respect, but it was a, it was a very quality situation. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. And another question: when the when Michael passed away, he was preparing for the show. You were were you training with him, or I don't mean training, um, practicing with him? I was with him two days before. Oh wow! Ooh. 
Wow. So oh, I have wow. pictures. I'm so sorry. Of him. Um, Skip Jordan, my god brother here. He he can he could tell you. Um, he's seen the pictures of him, and I'm as close as you and I. And he told me to take the picture. I don't know why. And he said this is going to mean something someday. Just like the picture of he and I working on the set of history, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. where we're dressed identical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. And he when when he said let's take the picture, he said. It would be interesting if we turned this way and he grabbed my face and he twisted my head because that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's the way he was. Yeah. But it's actually a series of pictures. The first picture, which I've never really released, I'm kind of hunched over laughing because we just got out of the van and he had just tickled me in my side <laughs> before we got in position. So I'm saying all this to say that the human aspect of him was greater than the Mm -hmm. Superstar aspect of him. You're telling the the real yes, Jackson, the real, yes. the real Michael Jackson of the things he did Correct. that you experienced, which probably I, I doubt if anybody else experienced that since you were that close. Mm -hmm. You know, amazing. amazing. I would say that he, um, you know, like, there's so many stories, but um, one in particular I remember when we were in a, some former communist country. He went into the hospital, the children's hospital, and, and the conditions were deplorable. And he told all of the parties that were involved that were going to benefit, I'm going to start by writing a check to change the conditions, and I want all of you in like kind to do the same, since you're going to benefit from my performing here, or I'm not going on stage tomorrow. Wow. Wow, that is amazing. That's now that's the way to get it done. That's the way to get the job done. It's amazing that to that's have the all, well because these are all true stories. So, so it's, and it's, it's just um, authentic. This is like authentic. first hand. This is it's what not, it is. Not hearsay. No, this, this is, is literally none of this first is hand. Well, yeah. there's no and the media for whatever reason doesn't. They're not interested. No, of course. Well, I mean, we are. We are. <laughs> they're, they're interested we're in the positive. Positive. We're interested in the positive. So yeah, that, yes. that's what's good. So true stories coming out. Oh, I appreciate you actually coming and letting people in on the real Michael not the what they've read not what they've seen on TV the actual yes. real person day to day not worried about cameras the real Michael so thank you for actually coming and sharing our, your stories and your interaction with him and thank you for help trying to clear his not trying to thank you for coming and clearing this man's name yeah thank, thank you, you both yeah. you know we appreciate it and you guys let everyone know Miss you where they can get the book Currently, um, Redemption, The Truth Behind the Michael Jackson Child Molestation Allegation is available on Amazon. Um, I'm working, uh, I'll be working simultaneously with the movie to do the second edition because I have so much more to add to it. The whole journey of the book has been amazing. Okay, well, see, listen, hey. We're ready for it all. I'm, I'm ready to get my read on. You know, I'm gonna sit back and you know I'm not gonna do the Apple read where it reads to me. I want to take the chance, you know, and read it myself. There you go. And I look forward to this. I look forward to the movie. I look forward to your show. Seeing more of everybody. Yeah. Seeing both of you, Keith. I know you are getting ready to start filming for. Yeah, for a TV series uh, it's called Grip. Uh, it's brand new out there. Uh, we start filming in uh, a little over two weeks. Oh, congratulations, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's going to be my most challenging role. I'm playing a Texas di district attorney, uh, so I have to study the character, study the accent, uh, the whole attitude. So, oh, yeah. You got that. You got it. <laughs> you got <laughs> it. You got that. <laughs> he looks like an attorney, doesn't he? I was going to say, yeah, you, know, you look like an attorney. Yeah, like, you, you know, could definitely be an attorney. off attorney. You, know, you're, you got that. Yeah. Well, Miss Neon. Yes. <laughs> I, I know what you got going. I know what you got going, but I'm going to let you tell everybody what you have coming up on Tuesday. On Tuesday, I have my show coming up. Actually, um, Valentino will be on the show as well. Um, and also, Geraldine will be on the show. So I've got that coming up. Um, it's always a pleasure to be down here on your show though Mike. Rude oh, Mike is so amazing. Mm -hmm. um, Rude Mike actually first came on my show some time ago, Vegas Live with Ninon, so don't forget that. Yes. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe because my producer says tell everybody to subscribe on YouTube. So I've done that too. Um, Valentino has been a friend of mine for some time and in his production company I'm kind of his voice. So when I interrupt a lot, which I do because that's my job, 
to interrupt and be rude. <laughs> <laughs> rude might, rude need not. And uh, so we kind of go together a little right. bit. <laughs> we do the same sort of thing. Um, but I'm actually his voice, and we've done many sort of voiceovers and different things. So it's uh, in his company, and for, so that's why I ask certain questions because of knowing him for so long. And um, Valentino um, is a, a person of his own. He's very quiet. He's very real. Mm -hmm. He's um, he loves people and only the truth comes out. So with Geraldine and Valentino and, and listening to their story of what's going on, which I'll have them both on my show, Vegas Live with Nina, on this coming Tuesday, which will be airing the end of that week, next week. And um, it's just all amazing to me that the truth, you know, always comes to the top. Yes, it, yes, it, it always comes to light. Yes, like, oil comes. seeks its own level, and I've just had it today, and it, and it's just amazing. And of course, you know, Keith is uh, one of my uh, directors for my show, Vegas Live with Nina. And I have, um, where is she? I have Lynn here. She's also my director for talent. And then I have Steve. <laughs> Hi, Steve. And I like to bring all their names up because it is part of what we're all doing. And, yes. and they should, just because they're behind the scenes, like Michael would do, bring in other people that don't get their name out there and like you do and you do. And so we are kind of a team of bringing people together and letting the truth out there. And yes. like you as well, Michael. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Well, you know what? I don't really know what else to say other than thank you. Can I say thank one you? Oh, of course, of I course. I definitely have to thank because I'm so blessed to have the team that I have. Not only my manager, Jarena King, who's in the building, or actually in the room. She's <laughs> filming. And, and Skip Jordan, my spiritual brother, my god brother, who covers me and keeps me in line when needed and lifts me up when needed. My beloved, she's out. We don't have a Victoria. Lot of Victoria. <laughs> and um, costume mama, uh, Roberta Dumont, who takes care of all of the what costume. I'm wearing. And um, I'm just really, really thankful for that team. Oh my gosh. We've got such a great team going, haven't we? Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream Teamwork. work. Yeah. Yes, yes. Teamwork makes the and dream work. I like that. I would be remiss if I didn't say, give a shout out to the Redemption Power Team. I have a team. It was the team yes, member that, that, that connected me with Mike. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to uh, James Ewell and Renee. It was supposed, she's here in town, but Renee Owens. And let's see, there's one more. Uh, oh, I cannot forget Carlos and his wife, Inez. And they're always knocking on doors. We're trying to get the truth out in many places as we can. And that's the team um, that makes it happen for me. Okay. Well, since we are shouting out teams, I have to shout out my team. My yeah, there you go. We're, shout out yeah, we're shouting out teams. I have to shout it out. Rude Ma for always holding Reckless down no matter what. If I can't make it, she makes it. She always makes sure that everything behind the scenes is taken care of. That's what a mother is. Yes. And you guys, if you guys only knew, like, she takes care of a lot. So she deals with a lot. She, she deals with me going crazy all week. <laughs> so this is the one that keeps me sane enough to get here. So I have to definitely shout her out. I have to shout out to all our interns and the whole Hot 702 team. And thank everybody. You know what I mean? This was an amazing interview and it still is because we're not done. I have a couple more questions that I need to ask, you know. <clears throat> so I need to know what was your... It's hard to say because, you know, he has so many songs. But can you tell me what your most favorite song was, Michael? Awful. I like um, <laughs> what man in the mirror. That one was so meaningful to me, um, you know, because that's a that's a song that everybody can Relate embrace to. and yeah. embrace when you don't bring. And then uh, the fans. When I started traveling around and meeting his fans, they had a song, the Earth song, and I had I hadn't heard it. When they said, "Oh, the Earth song," everybody was saying. And when I listened to that song, the Earth song. That became my favorite song, where he was even caring about the universe. <laughs> he was yeah. caring about the universe. <laughs> he was open to it all. <laughs> Valentino, can you tell me? I know it's hard, but your one of your favorite songs. Definitely Earth Song because of the message and the. Um, the um, he was speaking to the consequence of ignoring mm -hmm. uh, the signs of our demise due to conspicuous consumption and just ignoring nature or taking nature for granted. Okay, okay, see, hey. Oh, look, I, I'm sorry. 
I'm back to I'm I'm young, but Man in the Mirror was my thing. You know, that's like I can remember the video. You know, like I can't do the dances. I'm too fat, but I tried. I, mean, <laughs> I used to try. <laughs> I used to be a little fat Michael Jackson. You know, I'm gonna put that out there. <laughs> so you know, whenever you know if I was here, you need a break. You know, just call me up. I can come and you know yeah. do a show a couple of days. You know, and let you take a break. You know, I, I can't moonwalk, but I'll get on the escalator. Let's go see. Back. You're, 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 you're gonna do the moonwalk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The moonwalk. I'm, I'll do a little. I'll mix it up. So what I'll do is I. I have some socks on and I'll run and like slide and go backwards with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like to get the moon So you got your own interpretation. Yeah, of it. Yeah, so your you know, own I'll come in out. It won't it's, be the it's but probably it'll the get, earth it'll, walk. You're a surprise. Yeah, it'll the be more of earth walk. Yeah, because I'm gonna be all over <laughs> the earth. earth. I'm gonna fall all over the earth, you know, doing it. But it's, you yes, told definitely. that you're ready to retire, then you would let Mike come up there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, well you probably wouldn't get the show back. They probably would tell you to run with you. Better go from the mountain the man in the mirror to Mike. Yeah, the Mike. Mirror. He Mike broke that mirror. Right. That's what it would be. Valentina, the man in the mirror, to Mike. He broke that mirror. You know, that's what you know, that's where we'll go. Uh, you did that. That's, that's exactly. You know what? That's what would be right. at the bottom of it. It would be right. Mike broke that mirror. You he did, did that. that. You know? I, I want to elaborate on that. You know, Mike, rude Mike. I've known for some time, as I said before, and I think it was you were in a hospital bed when mm -hmm. you were watching my show, mm -hmm. and you had said to me that you said I want to be like that woman. Yes, and, and I do was the show. Am I quoting you correctly? Oh, yes. that's and amazing. so, yeah, so when wow. he started that, and I'm looking at you now, you've come such a long way, and oh, you've done so you. well, and it's very, very hard in this town. I know how hard it is in this town to actually make it and do it and have everybody kind of. So, what you have achieved today. Absolutely amazing. I'm so oh, proud of you, you Mike. I'm thank so you, proud. Uh, really. You're just thank you. and you're just Love getting up work. and up and up and up the ladder. You're I'm gonna trying. be a number one. I'm trying, I'm trying. Well keep trying. Well, listen, all I have to say is listen, all I have to do is keep watching my mentor. You know, Las Vegas Live with Neon at the Pepper Mill every Tuesday, you know, as long as I keep watching that show, I got it. Like uh, you're yeah, because I keep changing a little bit, you know, yeah, I, you keep know getting, I get a little better each you know, time, I mean, you know, I'm practicing like it's perfect, I'm still practicing at my age. See, and it works, and it it's working, it's working. keep it going, every keep show going. you practice, you step up a little bit, so I watch it, so I'm like, okay, step up a little bit more. Do the, yes, you know, do the exact same thing. There's room like for everybody in this world. Yes, it is, and, and there's uh, enough room for everybody to yes, grow, and so for everybody to be in business without all the bickering, we're not in high school, people, we're no. grown. So We have room for everybody, and of course, with your show, too, you've got your show coming out. amazing. When is it? Uh, come when on, is next Valentina. I, 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 I'm, I'm running it down. I'm still coming. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get the show up. Up. I'm trying to be sure we run our, hold our whole time out. So I was trying to hold it out. So Valentino, can you let everyone know when is the next running of your show? When is it running again? We we are currently in production now. Because okay. um, we what we're bringing forward, um, and we're actually collaborating with Geraldine okay. to bring okay. something that hasn't been seen before. We want to pay tribute to him. Um, in a, in a way that doesn't mimic, exactly. but it highlights and enlightens what he, the principles upon which he uh, lived. Oh wow! I cannot wait. That's going to be amazing. That's that sounds amazing. That's why the title of the show is Valentino, the Man in the Mirror, because I'm. I'm it's you. It's I'm not saying, him. Yeah. I'm. I'm saying uh, what I'm conveying is just like the song starting with the Man in the Mirror. So in my endeavor to convey a tribute to him, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Yes. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait. Well, just remember when that happens, I plan on being there. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm there. Like, I'm there to see it all. Like, I cannot wait. Well, we're, we're going to incorporate you, remember? Oh, well. Okay. Sounds cool. Excuse me. Um, I'm, I'm not in the interview, and I'm so sorry, but this is rude, Mom. So, <laughs> I need to... Nothing's better than mothers. I need to understand, and I need you to understand, that I am sitting in the room <laughs> with a Michael Jackson right now, right? And I completely grew up on Michael Jackson, right? Mm -hmm. So, I made the lady over there lock the door. I have to have a picture with you because I have Michael Jackson in a room at 51 years old. She still has a Michael Jackson picture. I have picture. never met him. And it is an honor. I would love to take a picture with you. Absolutely. And it's an honor it's my for you honor. to be I here. think that can be arranged, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can. That could happen, absolutely. 
literally yes. her grandkids are not allowed to touch the picture. Like that no. is well, one yes. thing in the house that like, kids can play with everything in the house, but, but not the that, picture. But no, no, <laughs> not that picture. leave that alone. That is, you know, that's just like the picture of Jesus. Leave that up there. Do not <laughs> touch <laughs> that. You know, <laughs> picture of Jesus. Jesus. Like, you know, and, and that's on the wall. Like literally, like she guards that. They're not allowed to touch that picture at all. And this is amazing. Like I, I enjoy this. This is what I have set up and dreamt of for so long to be able to get a cast like this. Well, together. if you keep pushing the way you're pushing, it's gonna all happen for you. I believe me, it will. I, I'm, but you I'm have not to gonna keep, stop. I'm not gonna keep, stop. You know, that's just like uh, Valentino. He does the same thing. He keeps pushing, and, and he's and got his show coming together and everything coming together. What he wants, and that's amazing. Oh my gosh, I yes. can't wait for it. So, so Miss Hughes. Can you let everyone else know what's what's coming next with you in the book? Um, I mainly uh, it's the movie. Mm -hmm. um, my focus and my concentration is making sure that the movie gets made. Um, we're trying to ever since they released the Leaving Neverland documentary, we don't call it a documentary; we call it a movie because the two gentlemen that were in it, they were obviously acting. <laughs> <laughs> and once you put it out there and it's out there and they have proven so many lies in that documentary and they, they actually tried to destroy his legacy, but I'm telling people, you can't destroy Michael Jackson's legacy mm -hmm. because Michael Jackson's legacy was built on love. Yes. And in order to destroy his legacy, you have to be trying to destroy love and we all already know who's responsible for love in this universe so we want to make sure that his name is clear uh, to protect his legacy not only for his family fans all over the world and that documentary actually brought michael jackson back alive again yes it did mm -hmm. it made, hold on how do i say it <laughs> It made him relevant again. Yes. It made him highly relevant. And you guys thought you were tearing him down. But thank you for making <laughs> it to where up. we can get out with this door and get this put Absolutely. out there. So thank you for yes. opening the door yes. for us to come <laughs> and clean up your lies. That's you know, right. clean up That's your mess right. that you guys made. So thank you. <laughs> and right. now I have another question for Valentino. How much time did you spend with the kids? Did you ever, did you spend time with the kids? With Michael's kids? I was around them, but Michael kept his children very sheltered uh, away from, from, from the from what he called the circus uh, that's understandable. why yeah. that's why when understandable. They were, that's why when they were younger he had them in masks and disguises because he didn't want them to have the immediate pressure of as small children mm -hmm. that he had endured mm -hmm. No, oh, then let's see. I wish we all were like that because my kids, we walk out in the store and people walk up to me and I'm looking at them. I just watched you on some. Oh, you did? And my mm. son's like, well, Why are you talking to my dad? <laughs> <laughs> walk away. Walk away you know? so, my kids are actually my security guards, so I mean, I don't want to keep them out of it. I'll put them in there so they know. They're like, You know, as you're walking, hey, hey, what do you want? Kids. What do you What do you want? Like, are you asking for money? He's like, <laughs> Not today. Come back tomorrow. Like, yeah, so. I understand it's it. So. Talking about kids and everything, I was actually at Neverland. I went to Neverland and I I actually oh met um, uh, Michael's brothers and I met a lot of them because of the business I'm in. Mm -hmm. But it, it's for real. Neverland is absolutely for real. I absolutely. Never got the you never, I never even have a chance. You to walk see into these big, I mean, you drive into the big gates uh, mm -hmm. and it is for real with all these animals and all yeah. these. It was the most incredible thing that a private person owned. Oh my right. God. Because it really was for real. Mm -hmm. And it was all based around children. children. The whole thing was totally for children. And he was one of the kids. He was the He was the one. He was yeah. the kid. Yeah. He was the kid that put this together <laughs> and he and he just gave, as you say, from his heart all yes. the time. And he that's what he gave. And it was just uh, but it was beautiful. And he has some really incredible animals and things. Absolutely, you know. It was a, a lot of money went into that, and it was for real. A lot of time. Incredible. A lot of time. Yeah. Yes, a lot of time. And of course, the favorite, my favorite, was the carousel. He had the carousel. Mm -hmm. Jump, and I got on it. Became a kid again. <laughs> yeah, that's what he that did. That was the idea. It was yes. beautiful. But I just wanted to mention that because it was for real, and oh. it was beautiful. Absolutely. I wish I could have made it. I wish I could have seen it. Yeah. Well, you guys know it's about time for us to wrap this up. But I just have to ask, is there anything else, while we have the platform open, is there anything else you guys would like to put out there say? Um, other than other than we all know he didn't do it, but yeah. <laughs> I'd just like to thank you, Mike, for and, yeah, and, and also you. Valentino and Jodian and, and also Keith for bringing all this together and putting it thank out you. there. And I think that's probably one of the greatest things that could possibly happen, especially with your experience, what you've just heard. 
mm -hmm. um, which we probably haven't heard before, and it just gives this the ground like, hey, hang in a second, let's just yeah. think this over again and let's mm -hmm. see what's going on and let's see what's. I can't wait for the movie to come out. Oh, me too. I'm just trying to figure out what part I'm going to play in the movie, but. <laughs> 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 Well, I could be your assistant. So you know. <laughs> one of, one Do they have the assistants? That I wanted to mention is my journey with putting this book out, and I tell people this all the time it's been a spiritual journey. And everything concerning Michael Jackson turns out to be a spiritual journey. Yeah. This was. Yeah. I don't think we, this This is beautiful. I just, yeah. you know, he, I was talking to Mike and Mike said, he just said while we were talking, he said, he said, I've been trying to get in touch with Valentino and, and I've been reaching out. And I said, well, wait a minute. I said, I got his phone number and then I call and then you. Yeah, and I didn't know because I've known him for years. I mean, we talk, talk all the time. It is but. so beautiful. Everything concerning Michael Jackson turns out to be a spiritual journey. So you cannot tell me in a million years that he is that he would ever hurt a child oh. because God does not support a person who does that. Yes, exactly. and, yes, and he would and not. So I, I always like like to tell people. I say you got, when he was going through the trial and the and the fans were so concerned. I say you got to remember God is on Michael's side. I yep. say I don't know how God is going to do this, but Michael's walking out of that courthouse. And that's what kept him. And yeah. did Michael walk out of that yes, courthouse? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With that angel behind him, Mesero, with that white <laughs> hair looking just like an angel. Yeah, there you go. All right. Valentin, you were about to say something? I was, I really appreciate this opportunity, this platform, because there's been so much um, just ridiculous allegations that have been against him. And, you know, as this unfolds, There'll be more and more information that will support and promote the truth as it should be promoted, just like the other side promoted the lies. Yeah. Yes. Was promoted. Um, really, really thank you for being courageous and taking this position because it's not a popular position at the moment. But I think the uh, the paradigm is shifting. And people are, at minimum, they're questioning the content of that mm -hmm. movie. Now they're starting to question the character mm -hmm. of the actors. Mm -hmm. We'll they're see. questioning everybody, see. Oprah included. Don't comment. <laughs> but we are going to, <laughs> on that note, you guys, we are going to, <laughs> Reckless is going to thank to every in. one of you. Thank you guys so much for taking time and coming and sit down with us and help us get this story out. And again, it's we have an open door whenever you guys feel you want to come back please do with that being said you guys thank you so much and we are going to close out the show tonight and thank you guys again thank you amazing, thank, amazing you, Mike. Interviews. thank you guys very much awesome. thank you all right with that being said you guys you know what it is it's reckless it's rude mike if it ain't reckless don't respect it we're out <laughs>